Hey there folks, today I'd like to take a casual peek into the DC Universe Classics Forager action figure. This figure is numbered 6 from Wave 10, which contains the Collect and Connect piece for Imperiax. This set was first released around 2009 and is a Walmart exclusive. Uh, all of Wave 10 was a Walmart exclusive. And uh, I got this set uh, in 2010. Uh, of course at Walmart and it was on clearance for eight dollars taking a look at the forager in the package you can see that uh, this is an interesting fella uh, this is a uh, a Kirby creation uh, it's obvious uh, just based on design and look on here and uh, he is a fourth world character I believe he was uh, uh, one of the uh, parts of the insect world I believe and uh, he was a um, I guess a reluctant villain who died a hero uh, but taking a look here uh, at the back of the package you can see the figures from wave 10 uh, we have here uh, robot man beast boy the joker power girl man bat forager and uh, black suited batman and then we have the Imperiax uh, Collect and Connect uh, figure here at the top. Now, uh, as with most Walmart exclusives, uh, there are really no variants uh, in the wave. Down below here, you can see a biography uh, of uh, Forager there. And uh, further below, we have statistics for uh, Forager on there. We'll be right back and have Forager out of the package. Okay, we're back and we have Forager out of the package. First up, we'll take a look at the Collect and Connect pieces, uh, which come with Forager. And that's the head and underoos of Imperiax. And uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the head first. It's a very nice sculpt. I really like it. It's very detailed on here especially with the uh, row of teeth there it's actually quite neat and he's got these uh, red painted eyes which is kind of cool and uh, I don't know what these are here I don't know much about if anything about the character itself I think he's a Superman villain I'm not sure and uh, you can even see a bit of a top knot there it's actually kind of neat on there really really nice and uh, much less interesting are his uh, underoos here, and it's just very plain. Uh, you, it's hard to tell which is the front and which is the back. I'm going to go this with the front with the uh, DC uh, Comics uh, copyright information on the imprinted on the back there. So I'm thinking this is the, re the rear area of the uh, crotch here. Uh, but uh, these are the Collect and Connect pieces that come with... Forager, the head and underoos of Imperiax. Next, uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the Forager figure. And it's actually quite interesting. I'm really digging uh, this figure. And uh, first up, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at his, uh, I guess, shield or buckler. I don't know if it's uh, considered a shield, it's rather small. And it's got a nice design. The only thing I don't know uh, about uh, the character, whether uh, the shield is this way, that way, this way, or that way. I'm not. I'm pretty sure it's either this one or this one. But which I am not sure. I have to look at the packaging. But sometimes the packaging is wrong. I really have to look at the, some of the comics, and I don't have any of the comics uh, that have Forager in it. So. I'll have to do some interweb searching uh, to find out which side is up <laughs> on there. Uh, the other side of the uh, buckler here, uh, it's got these uh, three straps of plastic here to simulate a leather-like uh, uh, texture on there, which is kind of neat. You can see some of the texture details on the straps. And it's pre-bent, and it's kind of neat that it... It's go, uh, going through the the shield to to fasten onto the 
onto the uh, ends here. It's not actually uh, all a single mold. These are actually separate pieces, which is really nice on there. And it slips in and out of uh, Forge's arm uh, pretty well on there. And, uh, it's, and it's not loose. It doesn't come off. It actually f form fits his forearm there. So you can do some posing with it uh, without it uh, rattling around or coming off uh, easily on there, which is kind of nice. And uh, taking a look here at the Forger figure, and it, it is uh, an interesting figure. It's got the Kirby design, that's for sure, especially at the legs here. Uh, he likes to use uh, line patterns or zigzags, circles, uh, wherever you can find a, a use to uh, to apply these, uh, not abstract, but the simple designs uh, th on the figure. And uh, very interesting head sculpt there. Uh, I don't know if it's the character or it's just the mold on here, but it doesn't seem to be entirely uh, symmetrical. It's a little asymmetrical. It may be just the mold on the head sculpt here, but it's uh, a little bit more rounded on the uh, on his uh, right side than it is on his left side. It looks a little more flatter on this left side, but that could be just a, a, a bad uh, mold application, I'm not sure. But uh, looking at the figure here, he's got some interesting eyewear there and an open mouth on there. It's uh, rather interesting on there. Other than that, it's rather plain on the head sculpt. Uh, he's sporting this uh, bandolier type thing which is kind of neat and this is not glued on this is a separate piece and it looks like it's one piece as well I could not find any fasteners to take this apart or not and it was probably applied onto the uh, onto the figure uh, before the head was uh, placed into onto the body uh, but uh, it's loose on here and you can actually move it around uh, back and forth and also, he has this upper piece of armor here. It's just made of a soft rubber on there, which is kind of neat on there. Although it's just the same colors underneath his uh, shirt here. So it would have been nice if it was uh, just a little bit lighter or darker shade uh, than the underneath on there. But it's still kind of neat. As it hangs over the shoulder here, you can see. So I guess this is a piece of armor for Forager. And another neat piece here is uh, these look like some sort of blasters he has on his other forearm on there. It's just molded blue plastic here, uh, no paint details whatsoever, but you can see some sculpt details on there. It's rather neat. And that's uh, a little loose as well. Um, I don't know, yeah, is it part of the, yeah, it's a separate piece from the wrist and the forearm on there. And this one's tighter than the shield. You really have to grab the arm to move uh, this little blaster around. But it's still kind of a neat, uh, neat little uh, accessory there. A well, non-removable accessory, but still pretty neat. And then you have here uh, his legs here, or, or leggings, I'm not sure which. Like I said, I'm not familiar with the character, but it's still kind of neat. It's got that Kirby influence here on the design, on the line work. And uh, the paint on this is actually uh, done uh, very well on here. Uh, the lines are uh, nice and sharp on there. There's no bleed over anywhere, although there's a little bit of paint slop in the red areas. Of the leg, but uh, other than uh, that, the, the line work is still nice and sharp with no bleed uh, from one color to the next. Very interesting character. This guy is definitely going to be a member of my uh, Oddball Legion and uh, going to be a proud member of one. <laughs> and I believe he'll be the first uh, hero of my Oddball Legion. Most of my uh, members of my Oddball Legion are villains, but this guy will be my first hero uh, on the list. But uh, going over the articulation, the head uh, does go all the way around and uh, goes up and down slightly, uh, not too much. 
the arms do go all the way around even with this uh, shoulder here uh, it's very soft so you can get it's very bendable on there uh, the arms do go out and in the biceps uh, go all the way around uh, near the shoulder single joint at the elbow so it can bend uh, in and out and the wrists go all the way around uh, you really can't get it all the way around with the without moving the uh, blaster as well uh, but you can get the wrist uh, all the way around the forearm that is the torso bends uh, down up and back quite a ways the waist goes all the way around and uh, the legs are on that DC Universe Classics uh, leg joint so it can go up down uh, to the back and out the, to the side despite the uh, part of his tunic here and it's kind of nice that they added slits on here to allow the leg to go outwards even though Without the slits, I don't think it's necessary because it's pretty short. It's right above the uh, hip joint there. Uh, the thighs do uh, rotate all the way around. Knees bend at a single joint. And the feet uh, go up and down on this hinge joint. And there is a bit of ankle pivot on there. So overall, this is a very neat uh, figure. Uh, I, I dig it, really. And like I said, he's going to be a definite member of my Oddball Legion of figures. And uh, I do recommend it if you're into the lesser known figures. Uh, this is uh, one of the lesser known figures. And uh, it's a really interesting uh, figure with uh, uh, lots of accessories. Although uh, not all of them removable. But still, a uh, nice set of accessories for this figure. But this is my casual peek into the DC Universe Classics Forager. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.